All right, everybody, welcome to the next big rush. We are here with another man uh, from F3 Uranium. This is a really exciting company that everybody's been talking about, basically because they're onto something. For sure, they just made a new discovery up in the Athabasca Basin. And Sam Hartman is here to tell us all about it. He is a great and experienced geologist. And um, anybody that's found anything in the Athabasca Basin is good on my books. Sam, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So first of all, congrats on uh, just uh, recently uh, being promoted, I guess, uh, within F3. I'd like to to get to know you a little bit better. You know, we we hear uh, a little bit from uh, Ray and sometimes we, we hear from Dev being, you know, the flag bearer for the company. Uh, but how did you personally get involved with this project? So originally, I, I started working for a company called Fission Energy, um, which is sort of the original precursor to all of these spawned off fissions. So that turned into Fission um, Uranium, and then Fission 3.0, and then now we just renamed again to Fission to F3 Uranium. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been involved with the group since 2000, and I, I think 12, since 2012. Um, at that time, we were working on the east side of the basin at Waterbury. Um, and shortly after I joined, we made the discovery at um, Patterson Lake South at the Triple R uh, deposit on the west side. I was at that, working at that point on the deposit basically since 2012 until this spring. And for a long time, we were kind of split and we would work for both Fission 3.0 and uh, Fission Uranium Corp. Cool. At, so during the last time, so yeah, I've been involved in the PLN project specifically since 2014. Um, that was the year we first um, drilled on it, on what we called the A1 conductor. So that was kind of fresh off the, the triple R discovery, which was in 2012. Um, so one of the things we noticed right away there was kind of these very striking similarities in the, in the geology and especially the structure of what we now call the A1 main shear zone. So we ended up drilling that project over two seasons in 2014. So it was a summer and a winter pro, uh, season. Uh, we hit some, a little bit of encouraging radioactivity in hole 19. I think it was about 0.4% or 0.04% over half a meter. Good alteration. So we kind of knew there was something there, but we weren't able to really go back until 2019. So five years later. We drilled a bunch of follow-up holes around that area, but we didn't really, weren't really able to, to follow up on it and didn't tag into anything significant. So at that point though, the Northern 800, about 800 meters of that conductor still remained undrilled after 2019. And we've been wanting to go and fill that in ever since. So that's what happened in 2022. Um, in 2022, I was, involved with um, F3 Uranium, well, it was then still called Fission 3.0, as basically a technical advisor. So I was supporting their technical team throughout the year, 2022. That was a very work intensive year for the company. They had multiple drill programs, you know, all over the basin. And the last drill program of the year, which was in the late fall of 2022, was on that northern part of the untested A1 conductor. And that's where we discovered the JR zone with uh, one of the first targeted holes there. And basically when I saw the, the pictures of the core of, of that discovery hole 35, I, I knew this was the real the real deal and you know hit the road that morning and headed to site. And then a few months later now in the spring, I officially joined F3 as um, F3 or as VP exploration. Awesome, that's great. Right. So you, you've, you've done this before and uh, you've, you've seen yeah a discovery, I guess, happen, and that knowledge yeah. actually led you to, you know, helping to make this new discovery. Now, mm -hmm. please explain to us uh, non-GEOs, what makes this discovery unique? Because we first heard about, you know, the, the little bit of whiff that you had way back yeah. in 2014, which seemed to be, you know, from an investor's uh, point of view, which is obviously very different from a geologist's point of view, mm -hmm almost insignificant, right? 0.04% yeah. uh, uranium. It's almost like you can forget about it. It's nothing. 
But for mm-hmm. you, it told you that there was something more. So the, the something more that you've discovered has gone on to be some of the highest grades intercepts uh, in the world because you're in the Athabasca Basin. So to start off with, you're in the best place to, to find high grade uranium. Yeah. But not only that, compared to other projects, you're finding really, really good grades, uh, e- even even though you're you're amongst giants. Uh, explain to us, like, what is so special about this, and what do we know so far? What are some of the more recent results? What are they telling us? So I think that the 0.04% we had in 2014, it was significant for us. I think a lot of um, investors, you know, that were familiar with the uranium story, they were more familiar with East Side projects. Mm-hmm. And on the east side of the basin, there's there's dozens and dozens of occurrences where you have kind of a, a sniff like that. On the west side, I really don't see that being the case. On the west side, it seems to be either there's nothing or there's something significant there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the discovery, it is fairly unique geologically. One of the main, the strangest things about it is it's not associated with, you know, this large regional structure like the Patterson Lake Corridor, which hosts you know, triple R and and arrow about 20 kilometers away, but it's a relatively short conductive structure. It's nearly perpendicular. So like at a 90 degree angle to the Patterson Lake corridor Um, on a regional magnetics, you know, the area doesn't really stand out. And geologically speaking, what makes the JR zone the most interesting is the fact that it's in a not interesting spot at all. So, you know, overall the A1 area since 2014, and especially the northern portion that was undrilled, it checked a lot of boxes of the things we look for as precursors, you know, to host uranium deposits. But there's also a lot of boxes that were unchecked. And I think that would have been enough for a lot of uranium geologists to walk away. Absolutely. So, but yet still, it's, you know, yet here we are, and it's hosting the JR zone. You've got intervals and, and grades in there comparable to you know, what you would see at major deposits, like hole 60, which is sort of the last highlight hole we released. Um, and that was 9.4% over 14 and a half meters. It with a high grade core inside of that of five meters of 26%. So significant grades, true thickness of about 15 meters. And it's what's not to like about it. And yeah, I mean, really what this GR zone has shown us so far, and it's a lot of colleagues I've, I've been talking to, they've kind of opened their eyes now too, is that, you know, maybe uranium mineralization might be a little bit less limited to these idealized or preconceived ideas that we look for. And I think ultimately what, what paid us paid off for us um, was having the resolve to stick with this particular conductor for almost nine years. And also the management team, honestly, that that listened to us and continued to approve, you know, funding the efforts there. Yeah, it takes a so lot persistence of persistence is what people found found it. That's true. It takes a lot of faith in in your yeah. technical team in order to be able to raise money for something mm-hmm. that you have no idea if it's there. And it's very much like you said, it's it's all or nothing in the the west mm-hmm. side. Of- Basin. So Mm -hmm. uh, what would you like to see next, Sam? And what can investors expect moving forward? When are you going back out there to drill? Obviously, you're going to drill a lot more since what you found Mm -hmm. is so interesting. What would you like to see next? Yeah, so we're looking, we're looking to go back this June, probably this in early June. Um, We're just going to wait for things to dry up. And then, you know, we're in the process right now of planning a, an interesting summer program. And ultimately, I think what the most fundamental and burning questions that shareholders want to know the answers to are are the same things that we want to know is how big is this thing? You know, is there an unconformity or a sandstone hosted component to it? Uh, What about other pods? The the conductor is four and a half kilometer long. Was there other pods on there? What about other areas on the property altogether? So... You know, last winter, we basically discovered the zone while we followed up on the discovery and we had this fairly tightly spaced drill program at the JR zone. Uh, we were basically drilling on 15 meter section lines and doing fairly controlled step outs. And that was to get to know the zone. Uh, one of the first things when you make a new discovery is you need to understand on what controls the mineralization. Like why is it where it is? What shape is it? And where is where might it go? And then you kind of use that to plan a little bit bigger step outs. So I think that's the kind of the point where we're at. And starting this summer, we'll hopefully try to answer some of these questions that everyone has 
and we look forward to testing a bunch of new stuff too. So for me, like I'm a big believer always in balancing sort of the tried and true, the old methodologies, which has found most deposits and kind of mix that up with some unconventional or out of the box, you can call it dissident thinking. So I encourage my team to explore and develop, you know, alternative ideas to the problems that we're looking at, which is kind of, you know, an, in line with how we found this thing to begin with. That's very so, yeah, ultimately what shareholders can look forward to is um, what we want to do is unlock as much value as we can for us, us and the shareholders as fast as we can. And investors can be confident as, you know, as a technical team, our sole drive and mission and, and purpose is to find uranium. That's all we want to do. And we have the track record of, of discoveries. And honestly, like, I feel we're just getting started at PLN. So I look forward to the to, to the next three years. We call the first three years after the discovery a discovery the sweet three. That's kind of like the the time frame where you have the most shareholder attention. Mm -hmm. You can add the most value to the deposit early on, and it's and it's the most fun. It's the most fun three years. That's so true. They... <laughs> well, it's the most fun when you're finding stuff, right? And you're yeah. finding stuff, so you might as well yeah. carry it on. That's awesome. Sam, thank you so much. Uh, this has been really great. I'm sure that we'll have you back on the show later on, sure. uh, especially after the summer drilling, because there's yeah. I'm sure there's going to be uh, radioactivity in the. I I'm not I'm not I can't say that I am sure, but I'm sure as an yeah. investor <laughs> that you're you're going to keep finding stuff and that there's going to be radioactivity and readings and assay results that are going to come out that mm -hmm. uh, you comment upon. So hope to speak to you in a few months. Uh, when, when you guys are drilling and, and after the fact. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, we'll be watching very closely. Absolutely. Thank you very much.